This wilderness, it's very easy to be alone. You can look 360 degrees around you and see no one. Sometimes you really have the feeling you're the first person to come to this place. We don't have big mountains, but we have magic in the mountains. They're never the same. There is something going on under those mountains. The biking scene in Iceland has been growing like crazy for the past couple of years. So there are some issues and some troubles that comes with that. Where we used to ride the hiking path got so popular to hike it that it's just paved road now. Yeah, all the fun part of the riding was just destroyed. I would like to see more riding trails in Iceland. When I'm up here in the mountain, I can forget about everything else in life and I can completely get immersed in what I'm doing. Here in the, in the hills with my shovel, building more trails and getting more people to come here and bike. The mountain bike scene in Iceland is very young. 15 years ago, maybe 100 people trail riding in the whole country. Now it's exploding, of course, and people are searching for trails. It's a new sport, but people are at this stage where they embrace it. The main thing for Iceland it will be to have more trails. It's also going to be the main challenge because we have to keep being accepted as mountain bikers. So we have to find a way to balance like hiking trails, natural reserve with having more trails for mountain bikes. If you don't offer trails, people are going to go off trails. If you ride off the trail, you leave a mark. We local people know it because we know the soil, we know the weather, we know what happens. Iceland is very fragile. It's a very different type of soil and weather. And we need to work with it. The last time I was here, we shot a video where it was very clear some moss was getting ridden through. I've seen multiple videos in the past that show riders shredding through pristine landscapes in Iceland down scree lines, through moss, all this sort of stuff. And I thought it was just like at home in BC where it was kind of a free-for-all in a lot of places to ride. I got a handful of messages from Icelanders saying how it was very bad for them that that video had come out. If people that are against biking in Iceland see things like that, they have like a, a weapon against us. The view is really clear. It's like, don't bike out of the trails. So any biker that is spotted riding out of trail is jeopardizing a lot the mountain bike community here in Iceland. I felt bad about the way we made people feel with that video that came out. And I wanted to learn more about what their struggles actually are here and what challenges they're facing with trail access and trail building. Our main trail builders in Iceland are, are of course mainly sheep. They've been here for like a thousand years, just roaming free in the wild and making sheep tracks that we try to transform into bike paths. What we do in the Ice Bikes Trail Center is that we have been allowed to modify the sheep trails. We've been building new trails for a bit, but it's mostly just magnet building trails. He is very good at like scouting for new lines and finding some sheep trails that look just epic. So he has been doing a lot of trail building and finding trails all over the place that he can just give a little bit of love and then they're ready to ride. My name is Magne Kvam. I'm the founder of Icebike Adventures, mountain bike 
tour operator in Iceland, and I'm also a trail builder. The problem with Icelandic mountain biking is this A to B logistics. There are very few places you can actually do loops. So we thought we have to make some center so people can gather and build up one area so it's not just randomly all over the island. It's hard to build a community when the villages and the politics don't get the idea of it's it's a part of the tourism. People come to Iceland to bike. They bring their bike just for mountain biking. You can fill this village, you can fill all the hotels just with mountain bikers easily. If it's marketed and if there is uh, infrastructure for it, it's a huge potential. My favorite trails we have here in Iceland are in the highlands where we have to just be in and about hikers all the time. It's pretty different than most of the European mountain biking because it's a lot of hiker bike, so you have to be pretty strong and like hiking. And some people are just not used to or not willing to hold your bike, hike up a mountain to get to this ridge line. We're just used to it, we like it. See the small peak on the right hand side? Yeah. That's the top and then it's like whee, and down. Really nice. One. The feeling you get when you're on the highlands is pretty incredible. It feels like you're on a different planet. The colors are dramatic. The landscapes are so rugged. Every time I stopped on the trail, I just looked around me and couldn't believe this is where I am right now. We are going on Söder now, Mish. In Fjallavak, we started in London, Rogash. Do I say it right? Because I'm the Frenchie of the team. They are the Icelanders. Landman, <laughs> yeah. You said it right, going okay. up to the number. Landman, Rogash, to the numbers. And we're gonna ride all this ridge line all the way back to the campsite.
Right now we're in Husavik, which is the whale watching capital of Iceland at the northern tip of the country. We've met with some of the locals from the 640 MTB crew and they are super passionate, super energetic trail builders and they have this unique location where their local town has allowed them to build mountain bike specific trails. When we started this in 2018, we knew about maybe 10, possibly 15 guys riding bikes. Since we started the trail project, we actually found out that there's a lot of interest in the area. We have an agreement with the municipality of Nordhing, so we've been building trails for about five years now. Tourism has actually boomed since we started. The hotels, the restaurants and everything, they see a lot of people with bikes on the cars come to the hotels, so it's definitely been a big boom. So far in Iceland, I haven't seen a ton of community support when I go to these spots that people are mountain biking. They're basically battling for access. And then you come here and it's such a strong contrast. You look at the trails that they're making and all the sponsorships behind it, all the local companies that are throwing in funds and supporting however they can to make these trails happen. It kind of puts a fire back inside me to get home and trail build because they're just so stoked and they just want more and more and more and they're going for it and they're using what they have. And Seeing that is super inspiring and it's one of my favorite parts about travel, honestly, is going to spots like this and taking up the locals and getting their perspective on their own scene. Collaborating with all the trail builders as bad, how you see things, you build trails a little bit differently if you see through other sides and helps us expanding what we do and building better and more trails. I helped build some new berms and their eyes just lit up and they were so stoked. We fixed two corners up and then we ripped through them and everyone was laughing and having a really good time afterward. Right, the rest berms are really fun. So they were, it's a lot faster and expanded our views of how to build things. And that's one of the great things about trail building and having more people to work with. You always learn something the longer you do it. Akareri is another northern town. They have a proper bike park there that's on a ski hill. And even though the mountain is very small and not super developed, the few trails they do have are really well thought out. There's good flow to them. And the riders there have been building trails for over 10 years. Building trails here in Akareri has been relatively easy comparatively to other places here in Iceland. First, we had to convince the town council that there were a lot of people in this sport but they have been supporting the trail building here ever since, and they see the opportunity that it brings. Tomorrow we're competing in a downhill track that was made in 2007 or 8, and we just uh, renovated it, <laughs> built up the berms again and uh, some jumps, and it's all pretty sketchy, and I love it, it's super fun. The race itself was a really fun time. I saw a ton of kids between the ages of 10 and 15 up there racing, that just goes to show that there is a solid foundation of up and coming riders in this country and they're going to need support and infrastructure for more trails. I love mountain biking because of the community, everyone's together, everyone's talking. Four years ago, there were only like young adults competing, but now we see kids down to eight year old competing. My name is Anton and I love mountain biking because it's fun and just go fast. What led to our success here is definitely the cooperation between the city council and the local bike club. There was this need to build more trails and more accessible trails to bring more people to the sport and advocate for the outdoors. Now that I've come back here, I can imagine myself being a local rider and seeing the video that I did a few years ago. And I can definitely relate to them now a lot better than even a week ago. 
when you're traveling to different countries, I think it's really important to do the research and learn these things. Having that education and really understanding why it's so important to be on trail when you come here will make a world of a difference for the Icelandic mountain bike community. Iceland has a lot to offer. It has a lot of land that hasn't been used yet. And as the scene grows, we should also get more trails and better riding. As long as there are some people cooperating and finding solutions, and what's the best way to inform people where to ride? Because they're all just here for having fun. Like the hikers, like we're all here just to have a good time. I think what I stand actually needs is a more looser operations. Just let people go and build trails. Go out, have fun, be in nature, build something and ride it. It's fun. The biggest takeaway I got from this trip is if you want to come to Iceland to mountain bike, connect with the locals. The people here are so friendly, so warm. It's a really small community here and they want to show you that community. They want to bring you in and pull you into their favorite spots and share that excitement and stoke with you. If you can immerse yourself in their culture a little bit, you'll get to better riding zones and you'll be respecting the trails the whole time. It's a volcano island and it's gonna erupt someday. I mean, that's the magic. It's the power underneath. It's so much energy. There is like a new generation coming in. I can feel it. It's changing to the positive. We have to get things right so that we are not banned and they can take over and like build everything. We are just open to the past, but I think there will be a way bigger community in 10 years. More trails, more trails. We need more trails and then we need a lot more trails. That's it. Stay on the trails. <laughs>